Hey guys, Mastingen here, bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan battle video. And so yesterday we showed off the EZA Guldo on the uh, Extreme Tech ESBR phase. And so now we are going into uh, versus Super Int with Extreme Physical to show off the um, Raccoon. So we've actually got him on the next rotation with the LR Ginyu, which is what we wanted. Yet again, we started off against the uh, Bardock team, which is not the ideal um, starting fight. I'm using the Krillin support memory. I haven't actually used it yet. It's not bad for SBR because it gives uh, the enemies a bit of an attack nerf for the first couple of turns. It's not a huge one, so it's not like the best item. Like, well, it's not an item, but the best item in the world. But it is pretty solid. So let's see, actually, if we can just get Cooler to finish off. Um, Tora here. So, just like the Guldo, these videos are kind of, you have to take them with a bit of a pinch of salt because to take them into the mono stages of ESBR, like, there's not really a category that he fits on where I can not only run him, but also some units that actually do have links with him, as well as running the physical LR Ginyu Force, because obviously we want to have another Ginyu Force character on the team so that he can get his full passive active. Um, and obviously with yesterday's video with Gordo, we were able to run Janemba as a leader who has the secondary leader skill for extreme types of 130, but there is no equivalent for physical on global because Cooler doesn't have his easy A yet. So we are running a team of double 120 leads, so obviously not the uh, craziest team set up in the world. Um, but let's have a look at Raccoon post EZA. So he's got Terrifying Conquerors, 77%, and then Physical, 50% as his lead. Uh, his super attack is Greatly Raised Attack for one turn, Supreme Damage, and Greatly Lowers Defense. And then his passive is Attack and Defense 120, Attack and Defense 30% with each attack received up to 120. So once he's been hit four times, he's going to have 120% buff. So 240% attack and defense. That seems pretty good. And then he has a high chance to guard when there is another Ginyu Force ally on the team. Actually, so they don't have to be on rotation together. So we could actually run the Ginyu just as a support unit. Um, but he does link better, so we might as well put them together. Um, so let us go ahead and see if we can take out Bardock. Let's see, obviously in this particular uh, phase, because we're fighting against super int types, the guarding is not necessarily as important, but let's see if the guard actually activates. Yep, arrow pointing down, so we're guarding. So how much are we taking from a super with a Whis active? 35k, and then a 2 million attack stat. So uh, already he seems better than Guldo, because now his passive is fully maxed as well. Um, Guldo is obviously, I guess, for the utility. Um, having that 50% chance to stun, he also lowers the enemy's attack and seals, so if he doesn't stun, then obviously he's still providing a nice little bit of um, debuff to the enemies. Whereas Raccoon doesn't really do that outside of lowering defense, which, let's be fair, is not really important. Um, I also bought this Barbershop Nappa on the team, but that is solely because he does actually share a couple of links with Raccoon as well. So, thought we might as well bring him along. Um, I don't think we'll kill everyone this turn. Bootanks should probably take out Farsha here. Um, at least on this team, even though we are running like the lower leader skill and a slightly less powerful setup for our main rotation. I mean, we, we're rocking the other rotation as uh, the Bootanks and Super Boo. So obviously they're going to carry a lot of weight on this uh, other rotation. But I'm very interested to see Raccoon on this next turn because his passive is fully activated. So... Double super from Napa. I wonder if they'll ever easy a the barbershop leaders because uh, they're uh, they're pretty mid. <laughs> it's safe to say. All right, so put you in slot one. So fully built up. He's got 153k defense with no support. So that's actually pretty good outside of uh, whatever the Ginyu Force gives. I actually can't remember. Oh, it's only attack. So three key and 7,777 attack. Very outdated. They really need an easy a as well, but. We'll see what happens once they fully easy aid the free-to-play units. But 150k defense with the ability to guard is uh, is actually pretty good. So let's go ahead and do this. And then just do these, make sure. I don't know if we will finish everyone off this turn. I wonder what his attack stat is actually going to be. Because we've got the full buff. Uh, 2.3 mil. I mean, under double 120 leads. That's actually really good. And we double super as well. 
So because he greatly raises his attack for one turn, go up to 2.4. So that's under double 120 leads, by the way. So uh, I was talking about it in the Guldo video yesterday, but once these guys have all easy aid, the free to play one, so I'm going to try them out in a much harder event on uh, under double Bojack leads because all the Ginyu Force are on space traveling warriors. But if he's hitting like close to 2.5 mil after a double super on a 120 lead team, imagine what he's going to do on a double 170 team. So that's actually pretty good. And then obviously the guard uh, ability is going to be much more useful in an event where we're not just fighting against uh, type disadvantage for the whole time. Uh, the one thing I will say, and I say it you know, about these kind of units all the time, I am not a huge fan of units that um, have a chance to guard. Because it's, uh, you know, in difficult events, most of the time you want to rely on them to be a defensive unit and so then obviously if they don't guard then you can potentially take huge amounts of damage especially against type disadvantage like you think if we were to take that space traveling warriors team into the gt legendary goku event which i don't know if that's the event i'll pick because some of the members of the ginyu force like guldo is a good example from that esbr video yesterday uh, his defense isn't really even high enough to do well in ESBR, so I'd be very worried about taking him into the GT Legendary Goku event. But in that event, for example, like regardless of how high Raccoon's defense could get to on a 170 lead, if his guard doesn't activate in the Golden Azaru phase, then he'll just get absolutely destroyed. So chance to guard uh, units are always kind of frustrating, but... Took a bunch of damage in slot 1, but that's all good because physical super boo heals on super attack. And then kid boo in the final slot. Not the craziest damage dealer, but did we actually? Yeah, we took out Piccolo in turn 1, so pretty good. We won't get to see the full passive for uh, Raccoon here, but look at this. If we have Nappa linked up with him, he has quite a few extra links. Uh, Nappa has pretty bad defense though, but yeah, we'll go ahead and put him in the middle. We don't get him to get hit before, but this will be him with Lynx active. And uh, the LR Ginyu, if you get their 18 key super, they do raise allies defense. So we'll see how this works out in the first turn here. Uh, your attack lowered as well as the, uh, the mouse item, so we're not going to have to worry about taking too much damage here. Although remember, no one on this rotation is a particularly crazy tank, at least straight away. Raccoon actually was pretty impressive when his passive was fully built up, but remember he does need to get hit four times in order for that to happen. So 1.2 million, that's not too bad, straight off the jump without being hit at all. And then, yeah, obviously takes the first hit for double digits, which isn't surprising considering all of the uh, debuffing and everything that we've done so far. But yeah, in retrospect, the uh, <laughs> Rainbow Nappa taking quite a lot of damage. Um, yeah, we'll do this. Build up towards the Goku attack since we're probably going to get that in the third fight here. So... Have Super Boo go off again. Hopefully, we don't get Super in slot one. It's kind of awkward. But still take 61k though. <laughs> the 50% support units that I do have, because I have 8 out of the 10, they're all only 55%. So, obviously, in uh, Extreme Super Battle Road with no items active, they do uh, do take quite a bit of damage. But no additional Super from Boo Tanks is a little bit annoying here, because I think Cooler, even with like triple Super, is probably not going to finish them off. I'm so... I can't wait for Cooler's EZA. Um, I really wish they'd added it into the Videl celebration, just because that celebration was so, like, empty. But... Um, do you get an extra link from you? The Brutal Beatdown. Yeah. Okay. His defense is already much higher, though. What does Brutal Beatdown give him at level 10? Let's have a look. 15% attack. Eh, the attack is good, but I want to see. We'll put him in slot 1 so he gets hit one more time. I want to see the uh, his overall defense here because Gotenks is not attack lowered, so he's got 100k defense. He's getting the 50% support from Boo, so this is two instances of his passive. 14k is really not that bad, and then he's up to 1.87 on his attack stat already, which is pretty good. And then we drop to 3k, and then double digits. So yeah. Very good. I mean, obviously, Kid Buu is on rotation, and Kid Buu is one of the better support units in the game. But with his passive fully built up and no item active, that was Raccoon taking double-digit damage from an enemy in Extreme Super Battle Road. So, very, very good. Um, 
So let's see. What? Dokon attack. Uh, this is going to be tricky in the sense that I would quite like to get the Dokon attack with Raccoon. If he can get a bunch of hits go off first. Uh, this is also not a good rotation because Nappa will get absolutely destroyed in the last spot here. Um, who's attacking the most? Oh, they're both attacking twice, so it doesn't even matter who we, uh, who we focus on here. Right, well, we'll just focus on, um, we'll focus on Kid Trunks, see if we can just get rid of him. I'll use a Wii so that we don't have to worry about Nappa getting absolutely destroyed in the last spot here, and then we should be all good. Uh, big attack stat from Bootanks, and then, uh, we'll see the Dokon attack from, uh, Raccoon on the next turn, hopefully. Although hopefully there's going to be uh, attacks in slot 1 so that we can actually get some build up for him. Because that is definitely the downside to units that need to build up. Regardless of whether it's from attacks or from a certain number of turns or whatever. Obviously when you're in Super Battle Road, you're going into a fresh fight and you don't have any buffs. Um, but your Dokon gauge is full. Then obviously those units have a uh, considerable difference in how effective they are. Oh, is that 4 attacks? Look at that. All 4 attacks in slot 1. So... We're going to be able to get a Dokon attack with Raccoon with his passive fully built up straight away in the first turn. That's really, really good. And we got the item active so we don't have to worry about getting absolutely crushed here. We got no support. So I took a dodge. Um, that's actually really bad. <laughs> but we get three activations of his passive. So yeah, that's the one time you, uh, you don't want to dodge attacks when you need to get hit. So I think... Uh, I talked about this with the Gordo video yesterday, but obviously the Ginyu Force were already fully rainbow, link level 10. I gave them some dodge and stuff like that for the Ginyu Force no items run. But with some of the easy A's, uh, I definitely think changing some of their hidden potential is a good idea. And um, I mean, Raccoon, giving him a little bit of dodge is okay, uh, especially for those turns where his guard isn't going to activate. But we definitely did uh, suffer a little bit there from not having... The, um, from actually getting the dodge because obviously his attacks that would have been a little bit higher the Dokon attack probably would have finished off uh, Trunks but I mean that's not too bad considering this is a free to play easy A unit and remember double 120 lead team so considering all of those things put together I would say that that is a fairly impressive showing for Raccoon here so we should be able to finish off Vegeta and then move on to the final fight here. Well, of course, on a double 120 lead team, even Bootegs, not quite as crazy, but I mean, he's still pretty good. Additional super for nearly 2 mil without having done any of his uh, stacking attack supers. That's pretty good. So let's move on to the last fight here. Who do we have in the last fight? Goku. Is this the Goku Piccolo Vegeta one? No, it's the family Kamehameha one. Okay. How many attacks are we going to have in slot one? Ooh, lots. Okay, good. Perfect. So we'll do this. Um, hmm. I want to use no item here just to see how good Raccoon will be. Um, now, I very much am aware that we could die this turn just because of either the LR Ginyu or Nappa and not necessarily Raccoon. But it could, we could die because of the guard not activating. But I just really want to see how this turn plays out. So guard activated. 28k. Then we take a super. So 138. Three stacks of his passive. So fairly decent attack stat here. Not bad damage. And then yeah, double digit damage with the guard active. So really not that bad. Considering free to play. Double 120 leads. And this is ESBR. We put him in slot 1 with uh, no support. No item active. And... Uh, I mean, yeah, taking the super was unfortunate for sure, but pretty solid turn, to be honest, for him. Um, and then Nappa, 70k. All right, <laughs> calm down. Uh, and we'll go ahead and use this here. Um, so all in all, I think it's pretty clear, if you did watch yesterday's Guldo video, uh, Guldo has his uses on certain teams for sure, uh, probably more so for utility because of the ability to stun and lower attack and defense. Uh, to seal if you know those are going to be super useful if the stun doesn't go off helps him protect himself a little bit because as we saw he raises defense on super but still gets 
kind of destroyed because his defense isn't that great. So he's really good for utility, whereas Raccoon is just very, like, far and away, I think, a little bit more impressive. Definitely works better being slotted into a random team like this than the um, Gordo did. The other thing that will be interesting to see, of course, with the other Ginyu Force members is because both of these guys had a passive that required another Ginyu Force character to be on the team, we were able to do that with tech and physical because we had the two LRs, but we're not going to be able to do that with the other ones. So I guess realistically, we're not necessarily even going to be able to show the other ones off in the mono ESBR stages. Because if they have any sort of thing in their passive where they need to have a Ginyu Force ally, then we're not going to be able to get that to activate. So I'll have to think about that when it comes to how we do those videos going forward. But we'll see. Uh, Raccoon's got his full passive built up here. As long as uh, we don't get super attacked, he would be good. Um... I mean, I've got no way to heal that doesn't give us any sort of extra defense, so we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, we know if his guard activates... Yeah, there you go. Guard activates. We've got Princess Snake. 2.57 with the Kid Boo on rotation is pretty good. Um, so, yeah, rather than let the video drag out, we're just going to play it out. I'm going to end it off here. I think Raccoon definitely is way better than Guldo. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Obviously, Gordo has his uses because stun is very powerful for Super Battle Road. I'm looking forward to trying out the full Easy Aid Ginyu Force on, like, the extreme stage or something. But I definitely think uh, Raccoon is certainly a bit more impressive. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. So that is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been the Mars Ningen. Smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out the links down below for the Discord and the merch store. And I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.